The Human Development Approach has long emphasized the importance of good health as a constitutive element that is both of intrinsic and instrumental value for an individual's ability to thrive. On the UN's Population Day, the global attention turns to the issue of family planning. It is important to underline the importance of voluntary family planning services because it is not only for individual health and well-being, it also for women's empowerment and for prosperous communities and nations. Family planning has well documented health benefits for mothers, newborns, families, and communities. The ability to delay and space childbearing is also crucial to women's social and economic advancement. Women's ability to obtain and effectively use contraceptives has a positive impact on their education and workforce participations, as well as on subsequent outcomes related to income, family stability, mental health and happiness, and children well-being. In a women's life, pregnancies that occur too early or too late or that are spaced too closely harm maternal health and increase the risk of prematurity in low birth weight or not normal pregnancy of women. However, the unmet need for contraception is still too high and is intensified by a growing population and a shortage of family planning services. There is a million of women who want to avoid pregnancy are not using safe and effective family planning methods and it is because of lack of access to information, lack of support from their partners, or gender-based barriers in communities. And barriers stemming from inadequate health systems that limit access to affordable, available quality products and services of like many countries, particularly in the developing world where the unmet need for contraceptives is higher. Women's encountered many barriers to using existing services, including distance service delivery points, Cause of transport, lack of knowledge about different types of methods, misinformation, and etc. And according to lack of contraceptions, gaya mga condoms, pills, kapag walang mga ganitong contraceptives na pampigil sa pagbubuntis, can be damaging the teenage girls because of their minority or an early age. They can have complications during their pregnancy and childbirth. It can cause of death and unsafe abortion. So what are a minor's reproductive rights? It is a women's under 18 are entitled to make decisions concerning their reproductive health, including abortion. State laws such as parental notification and consent requirements have restricted their reproductive rights and place burdens in abortion access. Abortion is the single most controversial reproductive right, rights issue in U.S. The issue turns on whether a woman should have the right to terminate a pregnancy that would amount to a living human being if remained untouched. In abortion, may tinatawag na pro-life and pro-choice. So, ang pinagkakaibahan ng pro-life sa pro-choice ay ang pro-choice advocates argue that abortion falls within a person's constitutional right to privacy, believing the choice to terminate an unborn fetus lies with the individual and her doctor. On the other hand, pro-life advocates argue that a fetus is a living being at the moment of conception and argues about should be criminalized People who identify as pro-choice believe that everyone has basic human right to decide when and whether to have children. When you say you're pro-choice, you're telling people that you believe it's okay for them to have the ability to choose abortion as an option for an unplanned pregnancy even if you wouldn't choose abortion for yourself. And pro-life, people who oppose abortion often call themselves pro-life. However, the only life many of them are concerned with is the life of the fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus. And they are much less concerned about the life of women who have un unintended pregnancies or the welfare of children after they are born. Sexual rights. Human rights refer to every person's freedoms and entitlements to do, live, in dignity. States assume obligations and duties under international law to respect. First, respect. States must refrain from interfering with or curtailing the enjoyment of human rights. Second, protect requires states to protect individuals and groups against human rights abuses. Third is to fulfill. States must take positive action to facilitate the enjoyment of basic human rights. Under international human rights law, all persons have the right to control and decide freely on matters related to their sexuality, be free from violence, coercion, or intimidation in their sexual lives, have access to sexual and reproductive health care information, education and services, and to be protected from discrimination based on the exercise of their sexuality. 
These are known as human rights related to sexuality or simply sexual rights. And the government of every country in the world is required to respect, protect, and fulfill these basic human rights. Sexual rights issues. Human rights related to sexuality address a wide range of issues and often intersect with several other rights. Examples of sexual rights issues include first, bodily autonomy, second, comprehensive sexuality education, third, criminalization and other restrictions on safe abortion, fourth, discrimination against women and girls, fifth, early and forced marriage, sixth, female genital mutilation, seventh, gender-based violence, eight, gender equality, and nine, gender identities and exp expressions. Number 10, HIV or AIDS. Number 11, maternal morbidity and mortality. And 12, reproductive rights. 13, rights of intersex people, rights of sex workers, sexual orientation, sexual rights of young people. If anyone questions your rights to these things, especially a sexual partner, they, prob they probably don't have your best interests in mind. Any sexual partner you have also has these rights, and respecting them is part of having positive sexual experiences. These experiences is, first, a positive sexual experiences are those that are consensual, respectful, and protected. A sexual experience that violates someone's sexual rights is disrespectful and often non-consensual, it may also be unprotected. The second of positive sexual experience is an explanation of sexual rights. So, number one, the right to make your own decisions about being sexual or not, regardless of your partner's wishes. This means that you can choose not to be sexual even if your partner would like you to be sexual. This includes deciding not to be sexual with someone you have been sexual with before. Number two, the right to make your own decisions about birth control and protection from sexually transmitted infections or STIs, regardless of your partner's wishes. The right to make free and responsible reproductive choices. This means that you can choose whether to use birth control and decide how to protect yourself. Making responsible reproductive choices also involves deciding if if or when you and your partner would like to have a child. This includes the right to tell a partner that you will not have sex without birth control or without protection from STIs. Pregnancies and sexually transmitted infections should not just happen. Number three, the right to tell anyone that you are not comfortable being hugged or kissed in certain ways. Even if someone is related to you, they cannot force you to experience affection the way that they would like. You have the right to tell your relatives and other acquaintances how you are comfortable expressing affection. Number four, the right to stop sexual activity at, at any time, including during or just before intercourse. This includes the right to make your own decisions about sexual activity, but it is important to remember that being sexual is not an all or nothing deal. There are several levels of sexual activity. You can decide what you are comfortable with and engage in only those activities you want to participate in. Number five, the right to ask a, ask a partner if she or he has been examined for sexually transmitted intersections, infections or STIs. Asking a partner about the STIs does not mean you are accusing them or anything. It means you are being a responsible sexual person. Number six, the right to tell a partner what you would like sexually or, or to tell a partner that you would like to be hugged, cuddled, or touched with, without sex. This means you have the right to talk to your partner about your, your wants and needs. It includes the right to tell a partner she or he is being too rough and the right to be sensual without being sexual. Number seven, the right to masturbate. You have the right to give yourself sexual pleasure. It is not dirty, wrong, or shameful. Your partner does not have the right to tell you not to masturbate. Number eight, the right to sexual autonomy, sexual integrity, and safety of your sexual body. This means you have the right to make decisions about yourself, life, according to your own values. You have the right to be sexual without violence of any sort. Number nine, the right to sexual privacy. This means... 
you have the right to make your own decisions about sex as long as your decision do not interfere with the sexual rights of others. This also includes the right to be examined by a doctor for sexual concerns without the doctor sharing that information with other people, except in extreme circumstances like abuse. Number 10. The right to sexual equity. This means you have the right not to be discriminated against based on gender, sexual orientation, age, race, social class, religion, or physical and emotional disability. However, the sexual decisions you you can make may be limited by these factors if they influence your capability to consent. For instance, a small child cannot give informed consent to anything sexual because she or he does not understand what that means. See understanding consent and consensual sex for more about consent. Number 11, the right to sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is not shameful. It is a natural part of being human. You need to make responsible sexual choices. But this can definitely include having using pleasure in your life. Number 12, the right to emotional sexual expression. This means you have the right to express your sexuality in any way you choose, including communication, touch, touch, emotions, and love, not just through sexual acts. Number 13, the right to comprehensive sexuality education. You have the right to be educated about sexuality. Education can help you make safer sexual decisions and know when to seek help should problems arise. Number 14, the right to sexual information based upon scientific inquiry. This means that ethical studies of sexuality should be conducted and the information gained from these studies should be available. Number 15, the last, is the right to sexual health care. You have the right to be treated for any sexual problems you might have and to get preventive care to keep you healthy. You should not be prevented from receiving this care because of sexual orientation, disability status, race, class, age, or other factors. Every state has laws about who can receive confidential reproductive services. It is important to remember that although you have all of these rights, your parents, siblings, doctor, and other trusted adults can help you to make a good decisions about sexuality.